This is Steve Weintraub with Collider, and I am here with the good folks behind the Art of Self-Defense. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing Groovy. great. Groovy. Uh, be- before we get started, I just want to give a huge thank you mm-hmm. to Supper Sweet, to Blue Moon, to um, to every all of our sponsors for letting us be here because covering South By uh, costs money, and uh, we've had some amazing sponsors, and I just want to give a huge thank you to all of them. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. Let me start by saying how much I enjoyed this movie. Uh, from now Thanks. on, I'm just going to call you Sensei. And uh, you bowed to me, right? Right, a hundred percent. So I'm just curious if this, true or not true, right off the bat, uh, this movie only happened because you wanted to talk about Face Off every day on set oh for God. like a few weeks. We did. We talked about it for <laughs> a actually. split second, right? I think my dad. My dad was big. Oh, you guys talked. We about talked about it for way more than a split time. second. What did I say? Well, I didn't remember you in it, and then when I watched the trailer, then I didn't remember like a spot-on impression of you in the airport scene oh, on yeah. the tarmac. I was basically yeah. playing yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. He's my little brother. Hey, hey, where do I go? I go on the plane? That was you. Right, remember that? That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got it down. Force twitches. Maybe they should you know. do the, the face-off sequel now, like yeah, yeah. 45 years later, and Jesse could play me. Yeah. Where do we go? Oh, that's the plane? Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got to get the voice. Uh, I don't have a, fl- a flowy jacket, so I'm n- the nerdy one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> You know, because I was originally supposed to have a flowy jacket. Oh, really? But I knew I couldn't compete. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so you didn't answer the question, true or not true? <laughs> true. Pretty. Um, I, I really enjoyed this, and it has a very unique voice um, and a very very unique dialogue and a, a, a cool world. Talk a little bit about the, like, where this idea came from and the germination of the project. Um, I've been doing jujitsu for a little while now. I've, I've been, uh, I, I want to say, like, five and a half, six years. And it's become such a important part of my life. But a few years ago when I started writing the script, it was around 2015, uh, I, I would it just kind of started getting into it. And I knew that I wanted to set something in the world of martial arts because I was, I was had a passion for it. And I thought that that could be an interesting uh, kind of world to play around in. But I didn't want to go the expected route uh, per se in terms of where the story was going to go. We definitely start the movie off in a more traditional kind of story structure of uh, like I want to say like a sports movie or something where you know that the character is going to uh, have a, a problem at the beginning and they're going to try to better themselves and at the end they're going to overcome or you hope they're going to overcome uh, and uh, we really didn't want to do that so we, we started it that way halfway through there's definitely a moment where the audience uh, is, is told the movie that you thought you were watching is, is not the movie that you, thought, that, that you are watching and uh, we just went forward with that balls to the wall like we we embrace the weirdness um the the world itself is very literal and uh yeah it's just a kind of it's the kind of voice that i i, I mean it's my voice that i like to write in but it's it's the kind of stuff that i want to see on screen so just making things that i want to see i i just realized that everyone watching this right now will not have seen it yet and i hate asking the generic thing but do you mind talking a little bit about what the film is about and for all of you a little bit about who you play Sure. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll start with what the film's about. It's uh, uh, Jesse plays Casey, a man who's beaten in the beginning of the movie within an inch of his life and uh, decides he's going to take up karate to learn how to defend himself. Uh, and he, at first, it, it is this positive in, uh, influence in his life. He starts to feel more confident and he's got uh, a sense of like uh, a belonging to a group now uh, and something bigger than himself but he starts to get kind of sucked into the cult-like underbelly of the dojo uh, that's run by Alessandro Nebola, uh, his character Sensei, and uh, it gets crazier from there. I play Anna, who, <coughs> I play Anna, who um, is a female character. And, um, <laughs> and she is, uh, she's been at the dojo for a long time and she has not been granted the right to ascend the hierarchy due to the fact that she is a woman um, and despite the fact that she is brilliant she is not allowed to um, achieve what she what she could so it's sort of about her inner rage that comes to fruition in um, quite a rowdy manner <laughs> and her and and they they meet each other in the film which is That's right. yeah That's such a good idea for them to meet in the movie yeah yeah um, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, Riley kind of described my character's plight, uh, so I don't know what I could add to it except to say that uh, it was the most fun I had playing a character because the way he s- speaks and behaves is, uh, is so unusual. He kind of is like a child in the way he thinks and behaves and uh, in a very sweet way, too, in that he's very trusting. Um, 
even of people that the audience is very aware he should not be trusting? Uh, I play a uh, uh, karate sensei who um, Jesse's character comes, to, you know, seeks out to try and teach him how to be a man. And uh, he is probably somebody who may have been a lot like uh, Casey, Jesse's character, at one time, uh, felt a lot of social anxiety and felt sort of physically impotent and, and found karate. And um, karate has, uh, you know, ended up becoming this, um, uh, you know, sort of devouring him alive. And, and he's become a kind of, you know, symbol of, of toxic masculinity. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he, he initially takes Jesse's character under his wing uh, as a, in a kind of paternalistic way as a, as a sort of father figure and slowly proves to be just totally unhinged. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of movies, and the, the script and the dialogue is very, very unique. I would imagine when you th three were reading the script, um, was it like, as you're reading it, was, were you like, oh, I need to do this? You know what I mean? Because I would imagine you don't get scripts like this uh, ever. I thought it was the most perfectly rendered thing I'd read. Like, every line is required to be in the movie. When we were on set, every shot, we all as a crew and a cast understood exactly what it was for. I'd never seen something so efficiently put together. Um, and it was unbelievably funny. The first thing I asked Riley is if he writes sketch comedy too, because the scenes were, if they were to be played a certain way, could seem like broad comedy, but because there's this undertone of sadness and darkness and danger and these wonderful themes about masculinity and the absurdity of, you know, aspirations for, you know, kind of blunt masculinity, they're so, uh, you know, profound um, that the comedy is just kind of like icing, you know, yeah. but these scenes, just the patter of these scenes is just unbelievably hysterical. I felt the same when I first read it. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it, which is such a rare thing to come across to have that sort of wholesome response and all the ideas and the argument of it was so subtle which was so cool um but immediately we were, we were saying this earlier we got so excited by, uh, by the style of the piece because you know exactly your parameters and your boundaries and what you can play within um and then speaking to riley it sort of like solidified that but it was so i, I yeah i loved it so much it was written you know it was, it was written with real precision and, and just on the car ride over here we were talking about it and i was saying it was maybe one of the first movies i've ever been in where the film that i saw when it once it was finished and edited was almost uh, you know like identical to the movie that was on the page and uh, in so far as that like usually like scenes and big parts of scenes are just thrown out once you get into the edit just because there's not enough you know real estate to keep everything and and suddenly the that you realize the story is very different from the one that you had set out to tell and in this case it really is exactly what was uh, the thing that, that we all read when, when it was first sent to us, which is a testament to how precisely he went about it and knew exactly what he wanted to accomplish. Have, have you seen, I know, I think the premiere is this afternoon, but have you seen the movie yet with an audience? Because as I was watching it, there is uh, one or two like holy shit moments that I think the audience is going to um, go crazy. I'm just curious if you've had that reaction yet. Uh, I've, I've shown it er, during the lead up to Locking Picture. I was showing it to director friends. I had a screening with like uh, a few of people that I really trust uh, to give some notes. And, and so that was a smaller audience. And then prior to Locking Locking, we did a gigantic, or I guess it was bigger than I s thought it was going to be, but it was uh, kind of a test screening for a general audience that was unfamiliar with anything about the movie other than Jesse was in it and there was karate involved. Uh, and Enough said. <laughs> they <laughs> Or in, and then uh, yeah, I I will Forget say that, that I was I was I was surprised at how uh, just how uproarious the reaction was, and like you're saying the the holy shit moments, it it felt like that in the theater. It felt like people were genuinely surprised, and there's uh, there's a moment where there was uh, applause that. I almost feel like I teared up a bit at the end of that, and and then you like kind of come to terms with things that uh, you need to fix, and it, it's an eye-opening experience. You you make changes based off of that. Um, but yeah, that that's the closest I've gotten to screening anything. But it wasn't finished at the time, so this will be the first time we watch it completely finished with an audience. And his grandma's his grandma's going to be in the audience. 
I'm excited for my grandma to see this. It's going to be very, I'm very curious what your grandma is going to think. She's going to dig it. Right. <laughs> Without a doubt. What, I want to definitely touch on, there is some great dialogue that your character delivers, some great insight, if you will. Uh, where did some of that stuff come from and how much are, is, were you, was there any sort of improv in the moment or everything was in the script when you got on set? Well, definitely no improv, really. I mean, uh, maybe right, like right, this. Right. <laughs> 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 well, no, definitely <laughs> no to that. But, no, the, but the, we, we definitely talked Why about things you, on set. <laughs> do they change uh, Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> um, yeah. They're, they're do you <laughs> alter Chaucer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th there there was no improv in the movie, uh, really. But we talked about ideas on the set. But no, uh, like in terms of like Sensei's monologues or advice to to Casey and that that uh, it, I I liked the idea of the student teacher dynamic, but pushing it further than you would expect and also uh using metaphors that people wouldn't usually use like the uh a bear is still a bear, bear a boat is still yeah. a boat in the context if of the movie it, it makes more it sense it's if a boat sinks it's still a boat <laughs> like and then talking about casey's like <laughs> rejection and so yeah it's uh it was just fun to play around with that kind of diet like even things that are extremely dark, uh, if they're done in the right way, can be very funny. And I had a lot of fun being very dark with Sensei. I mean, what he did so cleverly was to have these big, long speeches. And some of it is just, you know, makes total sense and is completely <laughs> rational. And then but without even like blinking, there's like a line in there that's just completely outrageous and, you know, bizarre or offensive or upsetting. And... It's just slipped in there amongst all this other stuff. And really the way that we had to play everything was just like run right through it. And so that the audience would almost miss it. But then you realize, oh, God, he's just laid that on me. And, and uh, there it is, <laughs> pulsing in the middle of the model. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, the dialogue uh, tremendously. I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, before I run out of time with you guys, uh, I, I have to ask, are you guys only working together from now on? Is there something that's going on? You should actually share a mic for this one. Yeah, right. it's mainly because of Jesse's wife and baby that I just, I'm a big fan yes. of the team. So I just. My wife thinks she's the funniest person on the planet. What and does I Banner think? Top 10. <laughs> <laughs> that's the baby. Yeah. Right. I mean, she, uh, we had done a movie like 10 years ago, and, uh, and then when she heard I was doing this, Jumped in, jumped in. Obviously, no brainer. And then she was doing a movie in Ireland, and so and I, I wanted to work with her. Yeah, and you jumped. In. Right, right, right. Right. Um, you you should say you. So you filmed something. Was it right after this that you guys worked together again? Uh, yeah, like a year, a year, right? Oh, yeah. It was about a year later. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It's uh. And by Lorcan Finnegan. By Lorcan Finnegan, who made a short film also about animals that was at South by Southwest. Not about animals, but you know. I, mean. I think it was something about a fox. fox. Uh, foxes. Uh, right. Lorcan had a short going around the circuit at the same time the cub. Yeah. Uh, my short was going around the circuit. And we kind of were friend, or friends through social media and, and uh, email and text and stuff, but I had never actually met Lorcan until recently. And uh, while when I met up with him while I was in Ireland, he was just about to start shooting with them. And it was just this cool thing where I was like, Double oh, we're, he's, I, I, I call it sharing. I'm pretty yeah. sure that I, I'm going to make sure I never work with either <laughs> of them. Again. I got to tell you, after people see Sensei, that will make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Sensei yes. Sensei's a tough character. Um, uh, my last thing for you guys, uh, uh, I'm, very, I'm very, very excited to see uh, the Zombieland sequel. I'm just curious what you can tease people about it. And I have to ask you about why, because I think... The thought of making that as a movie was the dumbest thing ever. And now that it's a series, I'm like, oh, this is the most brilliant thing ever. We shall see. Yeah, it's got good people behind it who really care about it. And I did think the script that I read was really, really exciting. And um, and the cast they've assembled are just super cool. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I'm, I'm really excited about it. For people that don't know what, why The Last Man is, uh, you should really make check it out. Yes. <laughs> um, and Zombieland, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going really well. We have like two weeks left, um, and it's just been great. Like, they wrote like maybe 10 scripts, and different people wrote scripts. And uh, so we didn't want to do it uh, unless it was amazing, because it's not just like a popular movie, but it's also kind of a beloved movie that people have like personal feelings about, you know what I mean? So um, we had the feeling like it had to be great, and they finally wrote something that was great. It really is, and 
you know, has amazing original, you know, uh, concepts. It's just wonderful. It's been going really well. I was going to say with the, I, I know you got to go, but I would imagine you guys wouldn't have done another one unless you reached something that you were like. Yeah. Exactly. It wasn't that kind of movie that, you know, doing a sequel to do it. Yeah. You guys have to go. I'm just going to say for everyone who's watching, uh, absolutely see this movie when you can. Um, it's great. Thanks, and really, Steve. you guys did such a great job with it. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks in the so studio. much. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot.